we're going to do another version of spindle control. Last week we um, used the C6 spindle control board. This week we're going to use the PWM output that's already in Linux CNC. Uh, we're going to do that by taking a little tiny motor controller and this one wants a PWM input but it outputs an analog signal uh, to control a motor. Well we can take that analog signal and route it to our mills control board and voila we got it. All right, folks, so now it's time to play with the PWM signal. So I went ahead and um, changed my HAL file over. So now it's reading a HAL file that I made just with the step config wizard, and I selected pin 14 to be my um, PWM out for the spindle. So I've got um, this guy is hooked to the PWM output. This guy is hooked to ground on my, on my board, on my DB25 breakout board. And so right now it says zero frequency, or no, this is zero percent. And now you can click here and go to Hertz. So right now it says zero. Let's go ahead and see. Let's stop the spindle. Turn the spindle on. Give it some power. Okay, it was totally working. Oh, it's because this pin doesn't like to stay in. Ha! <laughs> All right, so right now the default setting on the step config wizard is 100 Hertz. And you can see that right there. I got 100 hertz. Doesn't change as I'm. You can probably hear my mouse clicking. I'm increasing spindle speed. Now I click duty cycle. This is percent duty cycle. So I'm at 33 percent right now. And as I click it, 35. This is 100 RPM increments. 37, 39, 40, 44, 46, 48. So to me, that's like so simple. Um, you go through step config wizard. You click that you need a spindle output, you select the pin, and, and you're ready to rock and roll pretty much. Like, this is great. The problem that I've run into is finding a simple board that can turn a pulse width signal like that into a 0 to 12 volt output. So let's play around a little bit. Alright, so I've been playing around with this little DC motor controller. Please excuse my spaghetti soup. So this is an l 298 N um, little board here. It's a DC motor controller and it's really pretty simple. You've got, the, well, first of all, the intent of this board is to plug into like an Arduino or some microcontroller and be able to drive a small motor up to like 35 volts off of it. So we're not using it that way. What I've got here is I've got a 12 volt input because um, it, it'll take in 0 to 35 volts. So this these two leads here, this is what they would call your your motor power. So if you were running like a RC car or something, this would be your main battery leads going into here. And then from there, you've got these two outputs. This is your positive and negative that go to the motor. And then one of these here, there's three pins here. Um, two of them are enabled. You have to have one high, one low. And then the third one is a, where your PWM signal goes in. Um, so that's pretty much the spaghetti soup. It got a little messy because I realized that you have to um, ground your DB25 board and this board together. You got to make them share a common ground. All right, so this is voltage. As you can see right now, we are at 11.99 volts. And I'm not going to move the camera to show the screen, but I'm at 4,500 RPM. Now if I start stepping it down, you can see it changing. This is 100 RPM increments going down 10.3, 9, 8. Uh, just for fun, let's go S100. Ooh, whoa. Okay, there we go. 179 millivolts. So let's go S200. Yeah, 300 millivolts. 500, 700, 8, 900, you know, 1 volt, 1.3, 1.5, 1.7, 1 1.9. So it's actually pretty smooth. I was having trouble before I realized I needed the same ground. Um, the, the signal was bouncing quite a bit, um, way too much for what we're trying to do. But it's actually working pretty good. This board is literally, I think I saw one where it was like five of these boards for 10 bucks or something with free shipping on eBay. 
So they're dirt cheap, they're tiny, and it really looks like it's an easy way to change your PWM signal to an analog voltage signal, and it just happens to be you can plug all the way up to 35 volts into this sucker. Whatever you're looking for for your max output, that's what your voltage in should be, and you can go from zero to that voltage. So it looks like it's going to work perfect. All right, guys, so it turns out that what you saw in that video is not quite right. Um, it turns out I had a pin backwards, so instead of the PWM signal going to the PWM input, it was actually going to one of the enables, and the enable was going to the PWM. So it gave me my 0 to 12 volt um, signal that I needed until I tried to plug it into a motor controller. Um, I, I got a treadmill one now, which I'm going to show you next week, hopefully. Um, the second I plug that in, plug the power in, boom, trip the um, ground fault isolator on my on my uh, outlet. So I went ahead and flipped the breaker back on, and I realized I wasn't getting a PWM signal. And then I realized I wasn't getting any stepper signals out to my steppers. So at this point, I'm pretty sure I fried my breakout board, the little DB25 breakout board. So I ordered a new one that'll be here tomorrow. But until then, I needed a way to finish out this project, so I grabbed my little Arduino that I had sitting on the shelf and uh, kind of played around with it so that it'll give me a PWM signal out so I can at least keep working on this. And uh, let me show you what I figured out. What you're looking at is the Arduino here, which is uh, taking an analog input from this potentiometer. So it's basically going 0 to 5 volts off this potentiometer into here and it's converting that into a pulse width coming out here. The pulse width is feeding into the PWM input this time, not their own one. And then these two enables, one is ground, one is power. Um, or one's high, one's low would be the correct way to say it. So that it will give a motor output here. So this is 12 volts going into this board, so it should be 0 to 12 volts going out. That's the goal. Now let me show you, you can see it on my on my screen here, what happens when I go to do that. So everything lights up. Go ahead and probe it. Alright, so I got 7 volts. Let me turn it down. Okay, so we got 0. Slowly turn it up. Nothing, nothing, nothing. 6 volts. And then it's nice and gradual like it should be. From there all the way up to 12. So, I messed with this for like a solid couple hours last night trying to figure out, you know, I was thinking it was something wrong with this board or maybe it wasn't recognizing the signal. I was putting pull down resistors um, in line with the signal and that sort of thing, trying to make it work. And then I said, heck, I've got this little motor from Radio Shack or wherever, let's just plug that in. Now watch what happens when I probe it. Now we've got motors not running, zero volts. Slowly give it some power. Look at that, one volt. I got my probes on backwards apparently. Two volts, three volts. It's all nice and smooth. Four, and that's actually past what this motor is supposed to have. So, all right, guys. So I managed to figure out why the um, the voltage was um, dropping to zero and then. Um, would instantly spike up to about 5 or 6 volts and then be smooth after that. Um, a guy I know suggested just put a uh, um, like a 10k resistor between the positive and negative so that that voltage has somewhere to go. It's not just just stagnant there basically. Yeah, so it worked. I've got a nice smooth transition from 0 to 12 volts on there. I don't think it's quite 12 volts. I think it's 11 something, but good enough. So next week I'll go ahead and hook the Arduino with the motor controller up to the actual motor controller, the treadmill, um, and hopefully to um, the treadmill motor as well. Um, and so the Arduino will at that point be controlling the treadmill motor. Boom. Then if that all goes well, I just got my new DB25 breakout board. So I'll put that in there and I will take out the Arduino, connect the um, the little motor controller up to um, my DB25 board so then Linux CNC will be pushing out the PWM signal to that little controller which is 
sending an analog input to the treadmill controller, which is powering the motor. Whoa! <laughs> That's crazy. So I'll see you next week.